Welcome back to Linux Network. Today, we've got some exciting news. GNOME 48 release candidate is here. This is the final step before the full release on March 19, 2025, and it brings some amazing new features and improvements. So, let's break it down. Before we dive in, let's quickly talk about what a release candidate is. This is basically the latest version before the final release. If no major bugs are found, this version will likely be the same as the final GNOME 48. So, let's get into it. First up, GNOME 48 RC adds Wayland Color Management Protocol support. This means better color accuracy across different monitors, especially if you use high-end displays or do things like photo editing. It ensures that colors you see on your screen are as accurate as possible. One of the biggest new features is dynamic triple buffering. Now, if you're wondering what that means, triple buffering is a technique that helps your computer display graphics more smoothly. Previously, GNOME used a method that worked fine for powerful computers but could cause stuttering on low-end machines, like laptops with Intel integrated graphics or even Raspberry Pi devices. With dynamic triple buffering, GNOME can adapt based on your hardware, making the experience much smoother for everyone. Next, we have improved window management. Now, new windows will automatically be centered by default, so they won't randomly appear in awkward position on your screen. There is also better support for NVIDIA GPUs when used as the main graphics card. If you're on a PC with an NVIDIA GPU, this should mean fewer issues and better performance. Nautilus, the default file manager in GNOME, is back in this RC after being missing in the previous test versions. It has received some great improvements, including faster directory loading, which means your folder will open quicker, fixes for free space calculations, so you'll get more accurate info when extracting large files, improved selection behavior in grid view, making it easier to manage files, better bookmark management, so you can remove bookmarks from the pad bar more easily. The GNOME Control Center or Settings apps is also getting some useful upgrades. A new HDR Luminescence Settings UI in the display settings, if you have an HDR supported monitor, you'll get more control over brightness and contrast. New power settings that support the latest power management features from Linux. Better fingerprint scanner integration, making it easier to set up biometric login. GNOME Shell, the core interface of the desktop, is getting a few handy changes too. Notifications are now grouped by app, so your notification panel looks cleaner. The default app layout in the application grid and folder has been reorganized for better usability. Fixes for screen time tracking and better handling of sleep and resume functions. Many GNOME apps are also seeing improvements. Evans, the PDF viewer, now works better with Adobe PDFs. GNOME Calendar has tweaked how it shows weather forecasts, making them more readable. GNOME Maps has updated map data for better navigation. GNOME Remote Desktop now supports hardware acceleration AVC encoding, which means smoother remote connections. GNOME Software has improved error handling, especially when launching apps or upgrading your system. Some smaller but notable changes include GNOME Text Editor has UI tweaks to improve resizing when the windows is narrow. Loop, the image viewer, now lets you shrink the crop selection when using a fixed aspect ratio. And Orca, the screen reader, has better support for reading content when scrolling through lists. And that's a wrap on the GNOME 48 release candidate. With features like dynamic triple buffering for smoother performance, better NVIDIA support, enhanced color management and major improvements to core apps, this update is shaping up to be a fantastic one for GNOME users. And as always, if you found this video useful, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.